I've been using the MacBook Pro 14 inch M1 Pro 2021 model now for about three months. And if you had watched my unboxing video, you would know that I had previously upgraded from a 13 inch mid 2012 MacBook Pro. And so there are things I definitely noticed right away that I really love about this new MacBook Pro. And also some things that are perhaps not so great. But I'll save that for a separate video, so definitely subscribe to this channel if you aren't already to see that video when it comes out. So for those of you who are watching and perhaps coming from an older MacBook, maybe you'll also be able to appreciate these quality of life improvements. So the first thing I notice is definitely how snappy everything is. I'm able to open multiple applications very quickly and just move between them without any lag. Copying and moving files is also really fast thanks to its extremely fast SSD in here. I got a 2 terabyte model, so this one's also a little bit faster than the base model 512 gigabytes. And all of this combined makes it for a powerhouse of a machine. I'm finally able to edit multi 1080p videos uh, without the lag that I experienced on my previous MacBook, which has been a huge improvement in my workflow in making videos for you all. All the while having multiple other applications like Chrome with a dozen or so tabs open without getting scalding hot like my previous MacBook Pro would. The only times I've noticed that it got slightly warm is when I'm doing heavy editing or exporting videos. For the most part, this is a dead silent machine on most of my tasks. I have only barely hear the fan noise when I'm exporting a lot of files. I'm also super impressed with the battery life on this thing. I was editing for about 3 hours straight and it dropped from 100% to just 62% with plenty of battery to spare. There was also times when I'm just doing light web browsing or word processing for about two hours and it only dropped around 15%. As you can see, it's been over 15 hours since I last charged this MacBook and it has plenty of life left in it. I no longer have that charger anxiety if I had to take my MacBook Pro on a short excursion. And then there's this gorgeous mini LED display. It's not quite 4K, but at 14 inch, I don't really care. I mean, I was perfectly fine really with my non-retina MacBook Pro. So this XDR mini LED with those deep blacks and 120 hertz refresh rate screen has definitely spoiled me when I go and look at say my work computer, which is definitely lower specs and even my external monitor as well. And this is also the year that Apple finally decided to put a 1080p HD webcam into this thing. And boy, it's really nice and crisp. And I'm glad that I can finally use virtual background in Zoom now, which I previously could not do. Paired with this incredible screen is some pretty incredible sounding speakers. Have a listen yourself. Gosh, the improvement is night and day. Now I can happily play my music through this computer without having to turn on my external Bluetooth speaker and it also allows me to enjoy movies without having to plug in some headphones. I also do like the keyboard. The keys are a little bit bigger than my previous MacBook Pro so it is a little bit easier to type on. I skipped the whole terrible generation of butterfly keyboards so jumping from my previous MacBook Pro to this one the keys feel more responsive and clickier, even though the key travel is shallower. But by far my favorite feature about this keyboard is really the Touch ID. Coming from an older MacBook that didn't have this, I didn't realize what a quality of life improvement it is. But the first few weeks, I was still too much in a habit of just opening up my computer and typing in my password. But when I started to really just go ahead and put my finger on that fingerprint reader, man, the display unlocked so quickly. Additionally, Touch ID can be used to make payments online, to log into certain online accounts, to unlock your settings, and also your password protected notes. So this was a small feature that I found super convenient. Just below the keyboard is that fantastic trackpad. It is the force trackpad that is much bigger than my previous trackpad. And honestly, it's crazy how they can manage the haptics to make it feel like you're actually pushing down on this thing when it's really just vibrations, basically. No complaints here. The same responsive multi-touch gestures that I've come to love on Macs. 
Now let's talk about the ports on this thing. And boy, I'm so glad Apple brought back the ports. To be honest, that was one of the main reasons why I didn't upgrade from my 2012 MacBook Pro because of the lack of ports. But they are pretty much all back here. On the right, you get a full, yes, I said a full SD card slot next to a USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port and a full, another full HDMI port. On the pictures, initially, I was kind of concerned that this would be like a mini HDMI port, but no, it's actually a full-sized one, which is really convenient. Then on the left side, you have the 3.5mm headphone jack that supports high impedance headphones now. You get two more USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. And each of these USB-C ports are able to support up to 96 watts charging, by the way, to fast charge this MacBook Pro. But you also get Apple's proprietary MagSafe 3.0 port as well. I don't think Apple gets enough credit with their MagSafe technology, so let me give them a little bit of screen time here. So with the MagSafe 3, it fixes pretty much all the problems that the previous MagSafe 1 and 2 had. So I came from a MacBook that used MagSafe 1, and as you know, that was a little bit unidirectional in its functionality because of the way that the plug was. But with MagSafe 2 and 3, that fixes that problem. But with MagSafe 2, it was an issue where the magnets were not very strong, so it disconnected connected way too easily but with MagSafe 3 I think they hit that sweet spot where if you pull it off at an angle or if you tug it suddenly then it will detach as it should to protect the laptop but if you apply a very slow steady pressure against the cable it will hold on pretty tightly. Beyond the technology, I love that it comes with a longer braided cable that is also detachable from the main power brick. And the power brick is backwards compatible with the extension cord. If you are interested in that, I was able to use my old former 2012 extension cord, fit it no problem. Additionally, power delivery speeds are much faster. I'm able to charge my MacBook Pro from roughly 20% to 100% in about an hour and a half at its 67 watt charger. And I do have the base CPU and GPU specs. So by default, I do get the 67 watt power brick, but I do get the option to upgrade for $20 to get that 96 watt adapter if I so choose. But reading reviews, I thought it wasn't necessary. And after getting this MacBook, I am so glad I didn't spend that extra money because this still charges up plenty fast. One small design change that I think Apple did good on is actually changing the rounded feet to more of a cylindrical bottom. I'm hoping this means it will be a lot more durable than the old ones. As you can see, my previous MacBook Pro, I had to re-glue on every single one of their little feet. And finally, what I love the most about all of this is that Apple managed to pack all of these great features in a body that is smaller than my mid-2012 13-inch MacBook Pro and one pound lighter as well. So for me, this upgrade has been tremendous. But I'm curious what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section down below if you already own this computer or you're looking forward to getting it. Definitely subscribe to my channel if you aren't already to see what I didn't quite like about it after three months using this particular machine. Thanks for watching. As usual, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video.